Welcome back. In this installment of our series, we'll be talking about terminology. Terminology is probably the most recognizable part of specialized language. It's certainly one of the most important. All communities have their in-group terms. Think about how difficult it can be to follow the jargon of, say, rock climbers or video gamers if you don't climb or game yourself. The same is true of the academic world. However, terminology is also one of those words that can have different meanings depending on the context. For most people, it's basically a synonym for vocabulary. However, depending on what's being discussed, it can actually refer to several distinct things. For example, it can refer to a linguistic resource, such as database information and computing, an academic discipline, as in applied linguistics, philology, or translation studies, or the technical designation of a specific concept in a given field, that is, the specialist vocabulary particular to that field. In this video, we'll basically be referring to this latter definition, that is, the idea of terminology as primarily a specialist vocabulary, often highly specific to a given academic field. However, although terminology usually refers to, special, uh, to a specialized vocabulary, it can also refer to symbols, codes, formulae, drawings, and other specialized representations of meaning that are not exclusively word-based. In any case, if we restrict our understanding of terminology to mean specialized vocabulary, then we can probably all agree that it is a part of specialized language that is actually the most specialized. We can also all probably agree that, in this sense, it is directly related to specialized knowledge and is often regarded as the clearest indicator of that knowledge and language. Whether you express it through words or symbols, Understanding and using the correct terminology in your area of specialization is one of the most important learning processes of your university education. So, why is terminology so important in specialized language? Well, specialists write and talk in the terminology of their area of specialization. In fact, they're expected to do this. So any failure to use that terminology might be regarded as a failure to act professionally. Terminology facilitates precision of reference. That's its primary purpose. However, it can also, whether openly or subliminally, act as a marker of professionalism and an indicator of belonging to a specific academic community. However, although it can sometimes seem like terminology is being used to keep non-members out of the conversation, it is actually far more concerned with clarity of communication. For example, Lay people might talk about the difficulty of making a certain sound in a certain language, but a phoneticist would talk about the difficulty of articulating a specific phoneme. Likewise, people talk about books, plays, poems, but a literary specialist talks about text. Basically, the technical terms in those examples have the same meaning as their non-technical alternatives. However, terminology allows the specialist to be far more precise in what they are referring to. Let's take a closer look at our examples. When phoneticists refer to articulation, they're not talking simply about making sounds. They're referring to how these sounds are formed by the flow of air through the vocal cords in a specific point of the mouth. Likewise, when they are talking or writing about phonemes, they do not simply mean a sound. They're referring to a perceptually distinct acoustic unit that distinguishes one word from another. Sure, the use of this terminology is an indicator of their professional or academic field, but more importantly, it allows them to be more precise and complex in their reference. Now let's look at our second example. When literary specialists talk about texts, they're not talking about a physical book or even the abstract idea of that book. They're talking about the linguistic and cultural content of that book, and therefore the ways in which that content facilitates their study. The word text in literary studies contains within it an understanding of the fact that a book is much more than a mere story or collection of words, sentences, and paragraphs. It is the coded form of a complex series of linguistic structures and cultural ideas. Again, the use of this terminology marks the speaker or writer as a member of a specific academic community, but it also allows him or her to be more precise and to make points that are more technically elaborate. Now, these are just two examples of the importance of terminology. Obviously, you could find a vast number of examples in any academic discipline. The next question then is, where can you find terminology in use and how can you learn it? Well, 
As with all vocabulary, terminology is an integral part of the spoken and written language. So the terminology of a specific academic area or discipline will be in evidence in the written forms of that specialized language. For example, textbooks, articles, specialist studies, and so on. It will also, of course, be on display in the spoken forms of that language. Lectures, presentations, practicals, uh, t even tutorials or informal discussions of more technical topics. In many cases, such as the experimental sciences, the health sciences, law, economics, the sheer amount of terminology can at first seem daunting. Fortunately, it tends to be formally taught as a necessary part of the requisite academic training in these fields. In this sense, the discipline itself will probably highlight and illustrate the terms deemed important in the syllabi of its degree subjects. So, students naturally learn the necessary terminology through instruction and exposure to written and spoken forms of it until eventually they can produce it suitably on their own as required. In other cases, perhaps particularly within the humanities, the formal teaching of these terms is not as well defined. In these ambits, there are many words that are quite frequent but can have very different and distinct meanings from their non-technical counterparts. However, they are rarely taught in a formal sense. Words such as text, patriarchal, hegemonic, structural, or postmodern, to name just a few common indicators of academic discourse, may require students to pay close attention on first encounter and to actively inquire about their meaning from a reliable source before using them in their own written and spoken contributions to their discipline. Whatever your field, you should try to be open to identifying and defining the terminology you come across in written and spoken language. Take note of it. Write it down and try to work out what it means in non-technical language. Keep a glossary of the terms that you feel are important. Above all, don't be afraid to ask your peers or teachers for clarification. Competent use and understanding of the specialized terminology in your area of specialization is an essential part of belonging to the community of specialists that make up your academic area.